The purpose of this video is to discuss simple linear regression in SAS or SAS. Now there's really a lot we can talk about in regards to simple linear regression, but I'm just going to cover how to test to see if the slope is zero. We'll get a 95% confidence interval for the slope, and then we'll also talk about the R squared value and get the R squared value from SAS. But before we do any of that, the first thing we should do is just create a scatter plot of this data to make sure that it does or that it will follow a linear trend. So let's just do proc sg scatter, specify our data. Then all we need to do is just plot y asterisk x and go ahead and run. Okay, so here's the scatter plot of y versus x. We can see our points plotted, and it does look like it will follow a linear trend. It's very good. This means that a simple linear regression model should work. So let's go ahead and use the regression procedure in SAS. So it'll be proc reg. We can specify our data. And here you could also specify an alpha value if you wanted to. I'm not going to right now. And then we'll model y is equal to x. And then just go ahead and run. Now this gives us a lot of results. And specifically, I just want to focus on the analysis of variance or ANOVA table up at the top. So you can see that this ANOVA table gives us an F statistic of 30.86 and a p-value of 0 0.0009. Now you can also notice that the p-value for that F statistic matches the p-value for this T statistic down here. So what exactly are these two things testing? I'll tell you that they test the same thing. So let's go back to our editor and just write out these hypotheses. Now the null hypothesis that this is testing is written as the null hypothesis is beta 1 is equal to 0 and then the alternates is beta 1 is not equal to 0. So now what is this beta 1? In simple linear regression the estimated regression line follows this model where it's y hat is equal to beta sub 0 plus beta sub 1 times x. Now, these are estimated parameters which we'll estimate with linear regression. This is our x value from our observations. So when we test to see if beta 1 is going to be 0, what we're really doing is saying, does x have any impact on the estimated value of y? Because if it doesn't, then we can zero out this whole term and just use some horizontal line as our predictor for y. But if beta 1 is significant and beta 1 is not 0, then we know that x has a significant role in predicting the value of y. So now we're testing to see if beta 1 is equal to 0. That is our null, that it is equal to 0. And let's just say alpha is equal to 0 0.05. Now let's go back to our results. We said our p-value was very small, which is less than our alpha of 0.05. Therefore, with both the F or the individual T test, we can go ahead and reject the null hypothesis. So we can reject the statement that beta 1 is equal to 0. And we will then conclude our alternative hypothesis that states beta 1 is not equal to 0. So then we have concluded that X does have an impact on our estimate for Y. Now that we know that beta 1 is not going to be 0, what is beta 1 and then what is beta of 0? Well, SAS is very nice in that it provides us with these parameter estimates. So this will be your beta 1. This goes next to the x in that model. And then here is our intercept or beta 0. So our simple linear regression model for this set of data would be y hat is equal to 10.19 minus 0.94x. Before we go on, I want to stress that the f-test and the t-test are only going to be the same in simple linear regression. Once we move on to multiple linear regression, they will serve different functions. 
So we have our parameter estimates for the intercept or beta zero and X or beta one. Now what happens, let's say we want a 95% confidence interval. How do we obtain that? Well, we can go back to our regression procedure and we can just add an option to the model. So we want to say model Y is equal to X forward slash CLB. And now we'll go ahead and run this. And let's scroll back up to where we were before. And now just notice that it includes now the 95% confidence limit. By default, it's going to give you 95% confidence limits. What happens if we want to change it? Well, if we want to change it, I said earlier that you can put an alpha, an alpha value right out here, and you certainly can. Let's just put it at 0.1 and get a 90% confidence limit. And now when we run this, same printout, the only thing that's going to be different is that now we have the 90% confidence limit instead of the 95.